Good morning and welcome to our Student Hub Live broadcast this morning. Lovely sunny day where I am, although I'm inside at the moment. So this is a very exciting session for us because it's a sort of a, a hybrid session. So it's called What's in Your Open Box? And we're going to be talking about open study as the Open University. We're also part of a staff development conference. So it's actually quite exciting that we have a lot of students with us today, but we've also got members of staff and colleagues who are joining us. Now, HJ is our chat supremo along with Sarah and Mary. So HJ, I understand we're already having some lovely conversations in the chat to start us off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm really pleased that everyone's getting the sun. It's very sunny here in South Wales, and I know it's uh, very sunny in Leeds as well, Valerie tells us. Uh, I'm liking the fact that Barbara's uh, doubling up on things and being very productive. She's ironing as well as watching <laughs> Ooh, up no, like, no, we don't do ironing. <laughs> 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 and Paula, which is really exciting because lots of people are doing the same, but Paula's just submitted an EMA for B100 and uh, she's also got one more TMA and an exam and then she's done for the academic year. Looking forward to what's right. coming up next, but it's great having everyone introduce yourselves. I'll be putting your thoughts, comments and questions to our fantastic guests. So do introduce yourself, let us know where you're studying, what you're from, and what you're thinking about what we're talking about as well, because our guests would absolutely love to hear it. Absolutely, thank you. So I went straight in there because I understand we've got lots of repeat people. I know we've got some new people. Everybody is always incredibly welcome. Student Hub Live is our community. It's a it's cross modular thing. So we talk about different skills. We do online workshops to do with skills, and we're also doing these kind of sessions, which is part of the open program. And I've got a number of guests with me today. Before I introduce them, just a couple of things about how the sessions work. For those of you who are new, who may not remember. So you can interact in the chat and there was a number of people there helping you in the chat. So there's HJ, Sarah and Mary. And you should be able to see who they are because they've got SHL in front of them and you should be able to see their faces, their nice smiley faces there as well at the moment. You've already seen HJ smiley face. And then there's some of us here that are guests um, who will be talking today. And I have got Kath with me. I have got Martin with me and I've got Sally with me. And we will be talking about different things, exciting journeys. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Kath, for the wave and Martin for the wave. Come on, Sally. You know you want to wave. You know you do. Ah, fabulous. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I suppose I should wave too. Anyway, oh, it is two-handed one. So with the sessions, you can you can engage in the chat. Often we talk about all sorts of things, including chocolate, because chocolate tends to be one of the most important overriding factors of Student Hub Live in my experience. But do remember that don't share personally identifying information in the chat because this is going out live at the moment and then the recording will be available later. So we do have a number of things that we're going to be talking today in the conjunction with this idea of what's in your open box. So we've got a first question for you to get you thinking. I said about the open degree and this is, have you ever considered doing an open degree? Some of you may be, um, some of you may be thinking about that. So what we're going to be talking about now is I'm going to be coming to Sally first and this idea of what's in your open box. And Sally's got a number of different ideas and she's um, been involved in the open degree and it's opened different doors for her. And what she's going to do is she's going to bring out some props, which we love props other than chocolate. <laughs> I don't think anybody's got chocolate props, but hey, never know. Maybe we'll get some of those. So Sally, how about you tell us what's the first thing that's in your open box that you can tell us about? Okay, now here is the first Ooh. thing in my open box. I'm not quite sure if, you, if you can see it. I um, can indeed. I can't imagine why I don't have chocolate because clearly that would be one of my top recommendations for open university <laughs> study. So at the top of my prop, there's an open door. Um, so the open university has always had an open door and, and in the um, in, in the new advertisement that's on the telly just now mm -hmm. and on the billboards and everything, there's an open door. So the door has always been open for me. So so this um, this little Lego figurine that, that you can see on the step um, was me as a student <laughs> a, a long a long while ago. Um, and as, a, as an open, uh, I started as an open degree student. Um, I was completely convinced I wanted to be a physicist. And so I had all the, the modules mapped out. Um, but actually, it turned out that I really wasn't very good at physics at all. Um, and, and so it was good that, that um, there was a broad base of inter interdisciplinary study. Um, and and I, I, I started the, the mathematics and um, 
it, it just took off from there. Um, so, so at the time, my children were little. I was the first in my family to go to university, um, and I and I was I was teaching dancing, I was singing, I was doing all kinds of creative stuff, and 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 with, with and, and but but the opportunity that the Open University gave me to to gain um, an, an honours an open honours degree was incredible. So here was me there. On this, and, and yeah. I was going up, going up, and I could I could go into this open door any any time I wanted. Um, but fast forwarding to now, um, and I'll go back a little bit in time. But do you see the student hub live? That looks like the student hub live couch oh, down there. Indeed. I'm, I I'm thought missing you were the person balanced person. over on the side. <laughs> I liked the well, idea that is, you were now the person going. Ooh. This is me now. This oh, is, is me now. now. Fantastic. It is me. It is me now. So I'm going to tell you the middle bit of my journey. But just okay. to finish off the just to finish off the the first bit of the journey at my graduation ceremony, it was it was such an emotional, wonderful day. Um, and my little boy, who was eight at the time, um, said to me afterwards, um, "You know, Granddad nearly clapped his hands off." And it's emotional Aww. for me now. It was emotional for you then. This is a journey for 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 everybody. So so. So here's me now, way uh, away out, right. um, in a different faculty. I'm doing so. I was really all about mathematics, and I'll show you something else, another thing in my prop later on. But 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 now I'm doing practice research in a different kind of thing. It's nothing about mathematics whatsoever. It's about community and growth of collegiality and working mm -hmm. working with my wonderful tutors on that one. So I'm out there, I out on a limb. Oops, and I've just oh, fallen off. No. <laughs> no, no, but I, don't fall off. <laughs> but it's okay because because that's what you do in a research degree. You keep falling down. And believe me, I've had so many U-turns in my research. Um, but it's okay because you can kind of find find the door. And and this will be me Indeed. behind the door and um, before wow. too long. Um, Isabella, you must stop me when I've said too much because okay. I can talk about the Open University all day. <laughs> this is Doogie. Would... This is a, this oh, is another prop. Doogie's impressive. Can I just, I just do... want to go back to the Lego before you, we've had okay. some comments about how good your Lego model is, um, <laughs> much better than any I've ever tried. And I was also, what was, I what have just thought, I was thinking something to do with that. I was slightly worried that you had your back to the door initially. I think probably because you wanted to weigh from the door and you'd come out of it. But I thought it might be nice if you'd sometimes not thinking about having your back to the door, but going through it. I like the way you were going in and out of the door, but making sure it's not sort of, you're back to it overall. No, I, I, I think, I think for the door, um, I, I, I just, the, the door is always open, and I, and I just have lots yes. of different, different routes into it. Um, and good. the thing about community, it's really good to the open university community, including the student have live so far here, um, and, and thinking about the wider societal issues, it's just so important for exactly. individuals to have those connections, yes. because after all, yes. that's all. There is. Um, and I think that's, so, here's... so before you go on to do, sorry, I know you keep wanting to get on to Doogie and I'm sure he's going to be relevant. <laughs> You've mentioned this idea of societal challenges because that's part of our theme today, isn't it? And we, it's something that we're going to keep coming on about. And, and actually, I think you've, you've, you've sort of touched on that a bit. The You change from physics to maths and research. So, so far, you've found that being open, it really helps you with your societal challenges and thinking about big questions. D definitely, I think. I, I think certainly um, one example is, um, and, and so this my journey was about my journey. Um, but 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 really, the way to tackle societal questions is for everybody to think about their journey. Um, and, and certainly in the COVID nineteen pandemic, we saw how everybody played the part, and and how unimaginable solutions were, were were forged by people doing the you know there's the epidemiologists doing a cool much cool stuff mathematical modelers mm -hmm. doing a cool stuff but people in the communities thinking well i can get shopping for people and, and how the communities how the, the communities grew um and 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 and, and massive societal problems were were tackled um, in a in a local way. I love the quotation by Margaret Mead, which I, I'll, I'll just read in case I get it get it wrong. Um, Margaret Mead is um, a wonderful um, ethnographer. Um, Never doubt that a, a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has, which, which is um, wow. which I believe so true. And everybody's got their Absolutely. their own part to play. Yes, thank you. So I keep interrupting you. Let's let's hear about Doogie then. So how does Doogie help you for your open study? 
So Doogie was given to me, and I hope I don't I, I, I don't burst into tears again. Do, Doogie was given to me by um, my son when I was studying my undergraduate degree, and he was saying, um, you know, it's hard, but but here's a friend of yours. And um, at the time, we didn't have a Labrador, and we do we, mm -hmm. we do now, but it was our family dream to have a Labrador. And every time, you know, in in, in with my research now, there's often moments that I just have no idea what to write and it sometimes feels like it's getting on top of me but Doogie sits on my desk and he sat on my mm -hmm. desk all the time and it's a reminder and this this links to sustainability and well-being as well you know we have to so so well-being is a sustainable issue too it's one of the big societal issues mm -hmm. and remembering yeah. when you're studying that you have to you have to remember why it is you're studying, what matters to you, um, and, and make sure that you do something other than studying as well. So Doogie reminds Absolutely. me that I'm, Doogie reminds me that if, I can't, if I'm so stuck that I don't know what to write, which is practically all of the time, um, <laughs> then he reminds me, um, that he reminds me that, that there's other other things as well. Isabel, I don't know if I've talked too much. I've got another a, another prop. Let's hear very quickly, because I know you've got a maths book, which which was relevant, wasn't it? Let's hear about that quickly before we come to HJ to see what people have been saying at home. Oh, OK. So 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 this is this is um, so with my open degree with the Open University, I did various things with other universities and worked, mm -hmm. taught at schools and everything. And then my dream was to become an associate lecturer which I did, so I came back. And then and then I got a full time job with the Open University, which I still think is is the it is just one of the most wonderful jobs in the Open <laughs> University. And I got the opportunity to be involved in this amazing module. And it's right. called MU123. And I don't know if any of the students in, in the chat box have studied it. Mm. But um, it, the U means that it's a universal module and people yeah. people study MU123 because they have different different intentions for maths. You know, they might want a little bit because they're nursing or business or mm -hmm. economics as well as more maths as well. And I had the chance to write, to be involved in the team writing and presenting MU123. And talking about societal changes, it's life changing for students because they tell us. And I think we've given an MU123 award to around about, I should know the number, shouldn't I, as a mathematician, but I think we've given it to around 40,000 and students, Isabella, wow, which is totally times. amazing. Yeah. And this morning we had a meeting to to award award passes to another few thousand. So it's Lovely. it's Lovely. an immense yeah. it's immense privilege, and the Open University it makes it all possible. An interdisciplinary study makes it all possible. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a key thing. I've I've studied some interdisciplinary modules, and I'm involved in others myself as a tutor. And I love the the, the bringing things together and and thinking about things and the the societal challenges and and all the things. And you can look at them from all sorts of different ways. So thank you, Sally. That's been really helpful. H J. We asked people about the open degree earlier, but I'm sure that people have got tangenting in the chat box. What kind of things have we been talking about? <laughs> oh, as always, I. I think everyone agrees with Rahana when we say we love Doogie. <laughs> what a great <laughs> study buddy to have. I think Doogie is unlike other study buddies where Doogie probably doesn't sit on your keyboard and interrupt your study. <laughs> but um, Rahana says, uh, I love the idea of combining different subjects I'm interested in and interested in doing the open degree, thinking about children's literature, some child development and sociology, which sounds like really complementary subjects. Uh, Sarah's uh, started a, an open degree as well, looking at things like social work, social care and psychology, which again sounds like a fantastic pairing. And this is the great thing about the open degree, isn't it? Yeah. We can be flexible Absolutely. and choose subjects that work for what we want to do. Um, Alan and uh, Mary, who's helping us in the chat, have completed MU123 and uh, we completed it successfully. I completed Yay! MU123 as well. Yay! It's a great model and uh, <laughs> helped me brush up all my math Sally. skills. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a few of us in the chat are doing access modules as well. So we're not quite oh, sure great. where we want to go yet, but we're building a great foundation to help guide our choices in the future. Absolutely. 
Lovely. Thank you, HJ. Access. Access is a passion of mine. I'm involved in Y033 and, and the, the fast track version, which is the science, the STEM version of Access. But yeah, very interdisciplinary, leads on to all sorts of things. And it's really good and about building the skills and thinking. Some of my students are actually now thinking about um, a debate and how you actually use science and use factual information to consider different things and don't get involved but present different facts along the way yes all sorts of exciting things there so we've got another question for you so so far sally's brought out some of her props her wonderful lego house doogie and the book that represent her study represent her open journey we're going to be coming on to talk to kath and martin about their objects what kind of objects represent your study so all of us all of you that are listening and watching have you got a specific object other than mine clearly being chocolate, <laughs> chocolate and uh, chocolate as my three objects? And I'm very sad that nobody actually had that as, a, as their item today. But there you go. Anyway, right, I'll stop talking about chocolate. Now, Martin, let me come to you. So I know you've got a number of different items and you are, have, want to share some ideas with, with us about how things have helped you in your open journey. Yep, I have. Uh, so I'm the chair of the open degree. So uh Good to be here today. So um, I've got a number of items. I've even got a nice wooden box because I'm part. Oh, got, very nice. I, I, I won't <laughs> pretend that I made it myself. So you got my first item. Please, yes, please. I'm very excited to see. Okay, what it's so going my to be. first item. It, well, it's not as exciting as a Lego house, but it's a pack of cards. But I want uh, you okay. to think that okay, that it's really a game. So for copyright right. reasons i couldn't bring out what i wanted to bring out was uh, <laughs> a kind of particularly a really good computer game so my daughter for instance was really into playing uh, red dead redemption i don't know if played that so it's a kind of very realistic game set in the uh, set in the wild west um okay. and i think what those things demonstrate is that we really live in an interdisciplinary world so, so if you think about designing something like that game you know it's going to need historians who really can help them design it to make it look realistic. It's going to need computer programmers, obviously, but people involved in marketing, people involved in psychology about how you kind of make that game give sufficient rewards. So it's a kind of, I think we often think of interdisciplinary study in terms of like the big kind of complex problems like mm -hmm. the climate change or the pandemic, and, and it is very important there. Mm -hmm. also i think it's kind of you just see it everywhere we live in an interdisciplinary society really so even you know things like computer games really can't exist without these people these big groups who all have different disciplines different skills talking to each other but also it needs someone working in those teams who can get those people to talk to each other and understand how their their different perspectives and that's where the interdisciplinarian comes in so the interdisciplinarian for want of a better phrase, is, is <laughs> that sounds a bit scary. As much, <laughs> is as much a skill as a kind of very specialist skill, I think. You know, like, so, I think we need to kind of really appreciate that, and, and particularly, I think, as in a digital society, that I think in a digital society we really break down a lot of the kind of boundaries between disciplines. So it needs people who could help bridge those those gaps. I think. So my first object is a game of cards, but really pretend it's a very complex, nice uh, computer game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But play and games, I think, is a nice way of thinking about study because I think, I think when you said interdisciplinarian, I just focused on the disciplinarian bit, which is why I said it's <laughs> quite scary. But that's I'm just probably else. me thinking, oh, that, yeah, that's different. <laughs> but actually, the interdisciplinary thing—that's the nice thing. And games are interdisciplinary, and and actually having fun in study, I think, is really important. Whenever I'm doing things, I I don't want to be serious, and and I think sometimes we can think oh study's got to be serious and oh it's interdisciplinary which means oh no i'm getting the worst bits of all the no no not at all you're getting the best bits of all of the study and you can pick and choose and i'm sure as, as you said because you're the chair of the open study you actually get to see people at the open program sorry picking and choosing all these exciting things yeah. and going oh wow and it's and you do what you want to yeah. do and what helps you in That's your right. study yeah when i first uh, became the chair i thought um there'd be like one or two big pathways that students took mm. you know. but actually yeah. students combine all manner of uh, yeah. modules in, into the pathways they want that suit their needs and i think that's fantastic to see it's often a kind of an aspect of flexibility and personalization that we don't often talk about and it's really exciting i think sally talks about that and h was saying some of the the sort of combinations people come up in the chat it's like you think that's great and if we don't need to say to you these are the subjects you need to combine you can go i need to combine these for my purposes and, and that's really fabulous to see so just spot. before you move on, just before you move on to that, we've had Anne-Marie said that how do you actually register for an open degree? So she's studying level one at the moment, but she, she doesn't know what to go on to do. So so 
how. Can you give us a little bit of help there before you move on to your next item? Yeah, yeah. So you can, um, if you go to the the OU website, the uh, the open program is listed there. But you you need to be uh, named on a qualification. So you can just say, I want to have my degree to be the open degree, uh, and that means that's what your your things we can towards. But um, for it, you can study. There's over 250 modules which are eligible for the open program. So you can right. choose more or less what you want. But some of them do have prerequisites. So you know, if you if you're if you think you want to get to a take Sally's example, a third level physics course that might well mm -hmm. have some kind of like maths requirements. So you need to make sure yeah. you get those there. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of advice. Yeah. Speak to study advisors, go to the open program uh, on the website. If you look at the, the qualifications pages and uh, Mary's in the chat as well. So Mary can probably put some some uh, links in as well, I think. Brilliant. So, Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sorry to dump that on you, Mary. I'm sure you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> keep her working, Surprise. keep her working away. <laughs> That's so right. what have you got? <laughs> What's your second okay. item out of your exciting posh wooden box then, Martin? Do you want to see the posh wooden box again? I know? do want to see the posh like, wooden box. I, I like exciting. wooden boxes. They're great. <laughs> so the next one, a slight vanity choice, but again, copyright considerations. Uh, so it's a book that I wrote called oh, 25 Years of EdTech. <laughs> and what I wanted to think about was um, how we teach interdisciplinary studies as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, this book is about education technology and education technology itself is a very uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary subject. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote a book which kind of about the history of it. Um, and one thing I did was it, it was openly licensed, so it's free to download if anyone wants to download it. But uh, that also means that people can take it and use it for other things. So someone got in touch with me and said, I want to create an audio book version of your book. And I'm mm -hmm. going to get different people to read each chapter. And mm -hmm. they could do that because you know it wasn't copyrighted. Yeah. And then someone else said, I, what I'm going to do is run a podcast uh, after mm -hmm. each audio book chapter has been released, where we're going to get other people in the kind of this global community wow. to discuss that chapter. And actually, wow. uh, <laughs> the, um, I think the the podcast and the audio book are more interested in the book. You know, the books are kind of basic, <laughs> but, but I think what that showed, and, all, and in those podcasts, people came in with different perspectives and different disciplines and different takes mm -hmm. on my chapters. And sometimes, you know, they really sort of showed what I'd missed and stuff. And that was great, but it really created a, a dialogue around the book. Um, and I think that's a really good example of what happens when you open up textbooks. So uh, in, in the US and, and Canada in particular, mm -hmm. there's this, been this movement around open textbooks. So they're openly licensed textbooks you use, mm -hmm. you can take and adapt, which is kind of interesting itself. But what I think what's really interesting is when people get students to um, adapt those textbooks. And so you might have a book that's about something, you know, about a particular topic, but you ask students from another discipline or from their own experiences to bring, come in and say, add to this book. What's it missing? Why is it not talking about mm. people who are similar to you? Often, you know, we feel talk yeah. about people who are excluded from stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so bring in your perspective. And so that sounds like quite a simple thing, but I think by opening up the textbook and now and other people to contribute to it, particularly uh, learners, I think it changes that. The nature of the relationship with knowledge it's not just something you're getting and receiving but it's something you're contributing to and your own experience is valid and you can bring different perspectives to it so i think the idea of opening up how we teach things i think is really important in, in, in interdisciplinary study and i think that also links in with this with our theme about the answering questions because you were talking about people uh, students are to the same but that's actually the differences and 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 thinking about the big questions and there's all sorts of big questions about differences of people and um mm -hmm. issues about where are people excluded so i think that that sounds like people could come in for that and saying actually you've written this from this perspective or these students from this perspective but you know what i'm actually different but i'm not excluded because for me it works in this way did you get anything like that yeah, yeah. So you see people do that, you know, and I think um, particularly it depends on what you're teaching. You know, so a colleague of mine was teaching North American literature. And of course, lots of people are not included in those representations of literature. Mm. So our students went off and found kind of really good resource to say, yeah, well, you know, there's this story over here, but here's a here's a version over here, which kind of gives a different account of those kind of things. So I think that bringing in different perspectives, but also I think you know, I quite like to watch um, YouTube clips where 
experts talk about Hollywood movies. They say like this would never happen. So I love kind of having those experts come in. Like you know, so even if it's like a fantasy, like Lord of the Rings, or something, this is not an, a valid army formation that would happen. So I think yes. having those kind of expertise brought in is actually kind of really and adds value to those things. So that, that's really absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I think, and that's quite an interesting one. Yeah, I sometimes watch that kind of thing, and we're watching things and going. I'm, okay, I'm not a physicist, I'm, and and like Sally, I, I didn't even start off with physics, let alone carry on with physics. But uh, I look at some of those and go, uh, my 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 understanding of physics goes, no, no, sorry, that, that doesn't work. No, you cannot drive a car in space. No, it doesn't work. But yeah, it's like that that kind of the study. Well, you see that absolutely because I do that for my study has has told me that big societal challenge that the Hollywood blockbusters that are driving a car in space. No, sorry, my study yeah. answers that question quite effectively. Absolutely. So sure. what's your third item then, Martin? Okay, and third item. I don't think it's quite as cute as, uh, as the Labrador. <laughs> but my third item is a, is a GoGM penguin. So um, I run a project called GoGM, which is a global uh, community of PhD researchers in... Um, open educational resources, the research, the research in different aspects of open education. Um, and what we do is try to create the community. Because often these, they're the only people who are researching that in their university. Uh, and so we bring them together once a year and they get to meet other people who are like-minded and stuff. Um, and for some reason we um, gave them stress penguins because doing a PhD can be quite stressful. And since then the, the penguin has become the, the logo of our community. So all of our uh, things have, designed penguins on it we did a conference recently and the penguin was logo and people have penguin t-shirts on so anyway wow. so it's quite a cute penguin but i think what the, what that's about is really about trying to create create community and i think sometimes yeah. that can be difficult for interdisciplinary students so mm -hmm. uh, you touched upon this earlier and i think um you know if you're studying psychology then you're in a community of psychology students but if you're all studying different things then i think that can be quite difficult to send to form that sense of community and cohort. And I think there's ways we can start to help people with that. I think whether it's giving people tools like you know, owning their own domain, having their own blog space, so they can start pulling together um, the connections between the different disciplines and seeing how other people are doing it. Or we provide you know, courses like YXM 130 that allow people to make those connections. But I think trying to help people think who are studying open degree to think of themselves as interdisciplinarians you know, rather than just, yeah. I'm just gathering together lots of different things over here. It's like, I think that's yeah. kind of a really helpful thing too, and we can do more of that. So yeah, so the, the penguin represents community and and fun. So I'm I'm wondering, a penguin, why didn't you have a giraffe? I think a giraffe with a nice um, fuzzy face and the, what, what are they, <laughs> horns thing on the top? I thought that would have been fab, but I guess penguin. Well, it was the, we were buying the merchandise and the penguin was the cheapest option. So oh, it was very okay. pragmatic. <laughs> but since then, who doesn't love a penguin? You know, it's like, so. No, this is true. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So so trying to be slightly more sensible there. I think very good point. And I, and I know what you mean about the, the, the community. We will come on, all, all three guests will be talking a bit more about community. And, and student have lives part of that community because any university um brick universities students go to the coffee shop they go to the student mm -hmm. union they go to the, and they're there physically and and we do have tutorials obviously at the open university but i know what you mean about this you sometimes you think i've got nothing and, and it's not i've got nothing in common but my study's not the same as these other people so i'm yeah. not part of it but Within Student Hub Live, we're trying very much to build that community and say, it doesn't matter what you're studying, you're studying, we're on learning journeys, we're doing all sorts of things. And that's, that's really, I think, the key. And I think even within Open, as you say, yes, okay, one person could be studying French, one person could be studying textiles in Ghana, one person, American literature, but you're studying what are you learning why xm 130 i'm i'm a tutor on that module i know it's, it's brilliant for that, because you're actually learning about mm. learning at the same time as learning <laughs> so we, yeah. but yes absolutely thank you martin that's been really interesting we'll come back to you in a bit but i understand hj you've got lots of people who've got their items that represent their study so come on other than chocolate what kind of items are <laughs> study? well some people definitely got chocolate in there so hey. that's kind of a given i think uh uh valerie said uh, it's a great reward while studying so we can't totally. disagree with that 
whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had some uh, great contributions. So James says a banana. Now, me and Sarah did ask what this is about, but uh, she says we'll have to study U101 to find out. So uh, that just makes it even more tempting. Uh, Dominic says I have a crow figurine for focus and about five different egg timers for sprints and breaks, which I think sounds like a good idea. Michelle Sprint. says uh, from <laughs> sprints, yeah, sprinting? maybe quick sprints. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle says, um, I was writing on boyhood and children's and young mm -hmm. adults fiction looking gender, culture, childhood studies mainly. I still have a set of cardboard cutouts from boy band One Direction from that time. <laughs> and that about says, <laughs> sums it up. It's great fun. And I like what Linda said as well. I think this is really fantastic. She said, knitting represents my study journey. I have Ooh. various goals and knit bits together to come out yeah. with something that may be close to the original goal or something completely different different which Absolutely. i think is a great representation yeah. um christine said i studied a uh, biological psychology module many many Yay. moons ago Yay, and in those days we have <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Christy says, uh, in those days, we had a model called Brian the Brain, and it still sits on Christine's desk. <laughs> and um, uh, where's uh, another great one? I just have a look because there's so many. Uh, Paul is one I think we can all agree with. I think what represents my study is about a million pieces of paper all around me, <laughs> especially at TMA oh, yeah. and EMA time. Oh, I know what that's like. And Ruth, I like Ruth's one. She said, in programming, there's a concept of rubber ducking, explaining your code to a rubber duck. And she reckons Ooh. we could do that with penguins as well. And maybe Ooh. even... Uh, uh, giraffes Isabella <laughs> yes uh, yeah but yeah you'd have to you'd have to say quite loudly to the giraffe but anyway I can probably take that metaphor a little bit too far so maybe we won't go along that line. <laughs> brilliant thank you HJ that's been and it's lovely I think this idea of representing your journey your study journey that I've been talking about with objects can be quite a good one because sometimes the idea of pinning it down helps you to reflect. Those of you who are doing access often do reflection. So my students in access, they, they ask to reflect where you're coming from, what you're trying to do and so on. Now, I've mentioned this theme that's running through about um, big problems. So that's your next question also to be thinking about is that how does um, open study or how does it help you think about those big problems does interdisciplinary study help you with that that kind of thing it's probably phrased in a slightly easier way and it will come up on the screen i've just sort of talked around it a little bit and i'm going to come to kath it's great to talk to you kath about things i know that you've had all sorts of journeys and you've been going through things and i know rubber ducks are probably something that you're quite familiar with um, in terms of the programming so you've been a student you also you've been involved in the students association you're an associate lecturer and you're doing all sorts of things so you've got your open box your representation so how about you tell us what's your first object and how does it help you represent your study so i have an actual box but it's not a posh one like martin's i'm afraid sorry <laughs> this is um you know student identity here we don't get posh <laughs> things do we so i've i've chosen objects to represent um, three of the specific modules in my open degree that I finished okay. a while ago now. So here is the first one. Ooh. Ooh. And this is represent. That looks like this grumpy is grumpy cat. <laughs> yep. Well, he is grumpy, you see, because he's Schrodinger's <laughs> cat, and so he's a bit fed up with being oh. half dead and half alive. Okay. And he, re and he represents quantum mechanics. Um, Ooh, that was okay. one of the modules. That was one of the modules I studied in my open degree. And that it probably sounds like quantum mechanics, all oh, that's just physics. Sorry, Sally. Um, but <laughs> in fact, it's in itself quite within science, quite interdisciplinary in the sense that it is actually the foundation of modern chemistry. There was quite a lot of work going on now in quantum biology. And obviously, maths is fundamental to it. So in itself, it's actually fundamental to a lot of modern science. It's fundamental to a lot of modern technology. So that, I think, illustrates quite nicely why we don't see the sciences in isolation and how much, much of what we do today and what we rely on depends on things like quantum mechanics. 
Hey, like we're, we're and chocolate for me rather than quantum mechanics. Sorry, I'm just going to have to disagree. Can we have quantum, you know, but... can we have quantum chocolate? Can we have quantum okay, chocolate? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we can have quantum chocolate. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. That's fine. Okay. But I, I, I think the, the cat thing, I think, but even if you hadn't have said um, quantum mechanics, I'd have gone, yeah, a lot of study relies on um, cats and dogs. We were talking about them earlier. Sally's got her dog that was, I think, has been quiet in the background, hasn't actually, well, Sally's got a model dog. She's got an actual dog behind her, which I think has been being quite quiet, which is quite, quite. You're, I think you're probably quite pleased about that, Sally. But we have our study buddies. We have our animal friends. And oh, for many people, they really do help us through study. So that's fine. Sorry, that was another little tangent, Kath. Right, what's your next object? I, I don't, it's not quantum mechanics again, is it? Is it something I can understand? Or it's a robot. robot. Now, can so, I understand robots? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you can. He's a very cute robot, isn't he? You just have to turn the key and then he walks. Um, ah, okay. So, so he's, he's very nice. Um, and that comes from a lovely little course module I did called Robotics and the Meaning of Life. And Ooh. I just studied it because I love the title. Yes. And, it was an amazing mixture because we had actual ideas about programming robots and I actually acquired some Lego Mindstorms because I kind of wanted to and I wanted to play with robots <laughs> and have an excuse to play with robots. But it was also talking about the idea of what's going on with artificial intelligence. One of the mm. things we were sent was um, Isaac Asimov's iRobot novel about yeah. about various robots and the laws of robotics and in our final assessment we were comparing fictional AIs with what's actually going on in the real life as well so it was coming in some quite profound ideas about what do we even mean about artificial intelligence and some practical things about how the ideas behind robotics and AI can actually help us in our everyday life. Now, I did this quite some time ago, so it's a bit out of date compared to what we actually see mm. now, where we see lots of robotic things, the kind of automated cars and those sorts of things that are becoming yeah. far more every day. And I thought one of the things I liked about that was the fact that it brought together these two strands about the thinking mm. about the general principles as well as the actual playing with actual robots. Yes. Now, it actually reminds me, the second module I studied as a student way back in time was called Damage, Damage Brains and Neural Networks. And we got to try and it was probably a lot more simplistic than the, 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 the robots, but we had to program very, very basic things to show how learning would happen. So I think it was the forerunner to AI because we're going back the best part of 20 years now. But I remember finding that absolutely fascinating because it was like, oh, well, if this bit gets damaged, the learning, and it was a computer-based learning, but this is what happens. But it didn't always happen in the same way. And I think it was very interesting and, and thinking about the, the, the big challenges and the, the what was the second half of your title? Robotics and? Um, the meaning of life. The meaning of life. So that kind of idea, the, the my one was damaged brains and neural networks. It was it was mm. essentially neuropsychology and science. But yes, it was very much the thinking about the AI thing and oh, where does this go? What does it mean? It, you could take that quite a long way. I'm sure you could have really interesting discussions about that in the, well, here's it from a scientific perspective, narrow perspective, but opening it up. Wow. All sorts of things. Yes. Very interesting. So what's your third item then? Uh, okay. Well, the third one's quite big. I'm just going to have to lean across to get it. It okay. wouldn't quite fit the little box. It's London. Ooh, lovely. So, I've got London. Well, actually, I've got a few different things. Part of my module, I did some, my degree, I did some engineering modules, and obviously okay. we've got some lovely large-scale engineering there. But the one I really wanted to refer to was a fantastic module, sadly long gone, called um, Cities Technology from Babylon to Singapore. And that's yes, the disciplinary okay. thing I have ever studied. It was together ideas from, obviously, the technological development, but um, sociology, history, the works, and understanding the interaction between a city and the technology, understanding that it's not just about technological, technological drivers on their own, that you've got this whole function between environment, the societal that affects how technologies are implemented and used. It was absolutely fascinating. And we got at the end to do um, an EMA that was entirely of our own to get any city, any technology, the impact. And it was really the toughest, but it was still remains my favourite. 
Fab, lovely. And I think that... we've got a few connection problems with you, Kath. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to HJ and see if we can sort out your connection problems so we can hear a little bit more about that because I wanted to know mm-hmm. about how those different ones went. So HJ, we were talking about the big problems. We were talking about the items. What else have you got to share with us? So I think uh, Rahana has sort of an excellent everyday problem that we're probably all Mm -hmm. encountering that could use an interdisciplinary approach. So uh, Rahana says, um, would it help our understanding in the rise of the cost of petrol? So an understanding of economics, some engineering, sociology, psychology. I reckon economics and politics could go in there. And I think it really shows like the value of us doing our like open degrees and being interdisciplinary mm. and having a broad approach to solve these problems use all our thoughts and understanding but do let us know in the chat what other problems you think we're facing that could benefit from an interdisciplinary approach whether it's a small problem about getting our pavements fixed outside and potholes dealt with or a big worldwide problem let us know what you think we'd love to hear it yeah, and, and actually, you've just mentioned about worldwide. Now, we know at the start that we had a few people that said that they weren't in the UK. And I know when we do the workshops, we often do things. So on our map, you should be able to see that. Let us know where you are. And if you're somewhere other than the UK, we're talking about things. Obviously, we're an open university. We, we are in all sorts of different countries. And uh, also, we the community is is all sorts of different places we mentioned the cost of petrol and and often i think oh it's something that only affects the uk but i've seen it affects a number of other countries as well and kath was mentioning her module the from babylon to singapore let's see if we've actually got any obviously babylon i think if my geography is correct doesn't exist anymore but singapore does so kath is your is your connection um okay can we hear you now I hope so. Any good? Great. Yes. Yeah. Well, you were you were sort of a little bit actually a little bit robotic and a little bit crackly. So unfortunately, <laughs> we can hear you. So just just going back to the the Babylon to Singapore thing. What was your sort of your takeaway on how that helped you understand big issues in terms of of open and our theme for today? I think the big takeaway was that if you ever try to say something has one single cause or a one-dimensional solution coming from just one area, then you're wrong. It's never as simple as that. <laughs> I think it really convinced me. Someone who I might add before that was largely a very hardcore STEM person, it actually convinced me of the importance of the social sciences. Great. Oh, good. So that's it again. I remember when I was doing um, a, a postgraduate a module in, ter- in terms of education but it was quite an interdisciplinary one and I'd always as you said the hardcore stem that was definitely me and it was like knowledge is mine it's in here and then we go oh no no lo- knowledge and learning is participation so, oh no 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 we don't do that in stem no 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 because we take it in they were like yeah, you learn from each other and I had to I had to embrace that and it was like oh you do don't you you do actually learn from each other and the community of learning I know you've been part of all sorts of communities of learning that often you you say that sometimes it's this um you don't want to, but actually you realise that you can. And some things aren't aren't correct. And there was one thing you said that was it you said that nothing was wrong or it was definitely wrong. You say you had which way around did you say it there? I said if you're just looking at it from one single perspective or thinking there is one single cause, that's then it. the chances yeah, are you're wrong. Mm. Yes, yeah, that's it. So that, that and that's it. Sometimes when we're going and when we're learning as students, there may be some facts that are the correct facts, but often it's a case of when you're learning, when you're doing the skills, it's how do you learn? How do you embrace these things? And interdisciplinarity is is very much about that. There's lots of different ways of thinking about things. So what we're going to do for the the remainder of the session is is I've got all three guests and we're going to be talking about community and community and, and these interdisciplinarity interdisciplinarity things i'm not going to say interdisciplinarian martin because i I still find that word scary (laughs) but these different concepts now student hub live is a community in the first place um and a question for everybody that's watching and listening is that how do you engage with your community obviously everybody that's here and engaging with the chat and listening at the moment is engaging with the community is there any other ways that you think about it so sally i'm going to come to you first so how do you think open study helps with this idea of community and, and and helping us with questions if that's not too big a question um it, 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 and and that's my dog barking outside sorry <laughs> I, I i thought going going back to going back to my lego 
might might help a little bit because in terms of community um so he, so here i am facing the door now i i've, I've got myself back on track i've written loads <laughs> Great. of chapters and then there's and, and then there's lots of other students at the other side saying come on up but but yeah. what, I, what i wanted to say was if if you're you know, we've got lots of nice steps. The Open University is good at giving you steps on your journey. So if it's, a, if it's an interdisciplinary journey, you, you can plan it yourself. But but mm -hmm. there's there's lots of steps. But sometimes when you get to this step, you can see the door. It's open. You can see people yeah. who've gone through it. But you need just that little bit of motivation. And I'm sure that Kath could say loads and loads about this. But other students, um, if you if you can connect with, with other students, and Student Hub Live is an amazing way of doing this. And I think Student Hub Live is a wonderful thing and idea and place and uh, community. And and so if you, if if you can if you can and we're doing we're doing this from the perspective of module teams working with tutors to help students to make those local connections. So because if you're on your journey, just just finding the motivation to keep going, yeah. it does come from your tutor sometimes, but it's mm -hmm. from other students saying, yeah, 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 you can do it. Let's just keep it. And then we can swap cat and dog stories or doogie stories. It's yeah. doogie again. Um, <laughs> but, 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 if, but, but Isabella, do stop me if, 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 I, if I have asked you a question, but, but I, I met, I think somebody you know, um, at the weekend, doc, the lovely Dr. Stephen McNair, who teaches in psychology mm -hmm. and he teaches in statistics as well. And going back to your idea of the interdisciplinarity and how to tackle big questions like that, from his perspective, teach, teaching both, um, he, the, you, you look at reflection in a different way. So if yeah. you're a mathematician, you tend not to really want to talk about reflection at all. Yeah. And as Kath said, you know, if you come in from a STEM, STEM perspective, what's this reflection all about anyway? And, and, and I mean, I've become a great devotee of the social sciences as well. But in, a in an interdisciplinary journey, you, you look at, at really important things like reflection, because that's a big issue thing as well, because if, if you're if you want to know which way forward to go, then clearly embracing where you've been is a really important thing Absolutely. to do, um, profoundly important thing to do. And, and if you have different ways of looking mm -hmm. at that, so for example, Stephen was thinking about his psychology students, how they re approach reflection and statisticians, how, how they had a different approach to reflection. So that's, if you're a student studying in uh, across different faculties and you come upon similar ideas, but but you look at them in slightly different ways, and then that helps yeah. you to determine your own worldview. And it's taken me a long time to figure out my worldview, but yeah, um, within the Open University, you, 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 there there is a way for you to do that however you choose yeah. to. And it's your degree, your choice in an inter Absolutely. interdisciplinary approach. Yeah, and, and I think that's quite an interesting, and I think I like the idea of the the, the the social sciences, and often, I know what you mean, people go, oh, we don't want to necessarily think about social sciences, but we all, because we are all social beings, whether we want to be sociable, we're social beings because we're humans, because we, we have cognition, we talk, and we, we have mm -hmm. verbal, so I think that this idea of the reflection within it, and how you do it, I think, again, going back to this idea of the, the hardcore STEM idea, often we, we're very much facts here we go du, 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 and the maths works like that way how do we know because we've got the numbers that back it up how do we know the physics because we've got the experiments we know these kind of things but looking for reflection and thinking well where have i come from as you say you you know where you're going from where you've come from and, and thinking about it and, and it's an interesting one so martin could you because you you probably get quite a holistic view of this being um the chair of the open do you, what do you see in terms of the community of the open project and do you see that the open degree has has this community or is it something else that leads to it a bit of both i think um i think some students on the open program even though they're studying the open program see themselves as predominantly within one discipline or within one sort of area of study they see themselves mainly stem so or or arts with maybe a couple of other subjects elsewhere and other students really do see themselves as kind of fully interdisciplinary um and i think there's been a number of things that kind of help with that fostering that community and i think uh, student hub live is definitely one of those so we uh, ran a session last year on on tackling complex problems or wicked problems that i actually call mm. through this kind of approach 
Uh, but also, I think you see a lot of it on social media, and you know, there's there's lots of bad things about social media. Mm. We won't go into now, but it does kind of help blur some of those boundaries. So you see people making connections, whether it's via Facebook, Twitter, whatever. You know, so people aren't kind of constrained within mm. their their kind of boundaries. And I think for those of you who did summer school, it reminds me a bit of summer school sometimes. Remember, like <laughs> used to be there, and there would be like completely different courses. Like going on at the same time, there'd be like, mm-hmm. like social sciences and you know programming or whatever, uh, and they'd all be in the bar of the cafe at the end of the day, kind of thing. And it was always an easy mix. I think we have to admit that sometimes mm-hmm. like people come with yeah. kind of very strong disciplined views. They did get to learn to see each other as people and sometimes understand different perspectives. I think, and sometimes that kind of that informal mixing, I think, was was really beneficial. So I think finding ways that we can facilitate that online i think this is going to be really useful so i often think of like uh, people like computer programmers you know, a lot of my friends are developers but i think increasingly they've become aware and it's become more apparent that they need to have an understanding of issues such as ethics and social science you know like yes. you don't just you know, computer programs aren't neutral they have an impact in society and you need to kind of understand that at the developer stage and similarly i think you know social scientists can uh, could benefit from understanding how developers operate and what what software can do and how how networks operate. So I think creating forums or situations where those two people can bring their own perspectives to bear on the other one is going to be really useful for our students and and I think for them as as individuals going forward. So I think Karen on doing what we're doing with Social Hub Live and I think finding other ways to yeah. kind of get those to mix yeah. and I think through social media is a really good really good platform. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I used to be involved in the apprenticeship program and I was part of the English functional skills and we used to set a it was a it was a discussion. So people had to had to do a, a, a vocal discussion like this. And once the pandemic happened, it was it was all through online. And one of the questions I used to pose was uh, one of my colleagues used to pose was, is social media a force for good or a force for evil? And it was very interesting because mm-hmm. people came at it from different perspectives. And there was always a number of different students. And some people would come saying, oh, it's really bad because you just have trolls. Or do and then somebody else would say, yeah. but I actually I've made some really good friends and, and I can keep in touch with um, my family in Australia who I haven't spoken to for ages. Yeah. So and I think anything you can look at, there can be negatives, there can be positives, but bringing them together. And like you said, the, the meeting in the bar in the evening, some of it might be a bit stilted and a bit challenging, but sometimes it, it's the learning from other people. And I know, Kath, you probably saw that quite a lot. I know it was your previous role when you were um, the, the Open University Students Association president. But I know you do, because you did the open program and now you're you're tutoring on a number of different modules, you, I guess, see things from lots of different perspectives or people from lots of different perspectives. Definitely. And for me, it's quite an interesting one which deciding which hat I'm actually wearing in some cases like yeah. that. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I really relate to a lot of the comments that have been made so far. I mean, I think what Martin says about the meeting in the bar is really important. And ironically, the first time I met Sally was actually at a residential school. <laughs> and when she was actually looking at, when she was actually looking at things like um, how, how to get students to kind of connect and enjoy these sorts of things. <laughs> but I think the doing it online is, is a challenge. But mm. we spent quite a lot of time in the Students Association working on that in 2020 when the lockdown first mm. hit and trying lots of different things out. And we were all forced to experiment then, weren't we? Because Absolutely. routinely the Students Association ran lots and lots of, run quite a lot of face-to-face meetups. And mm. incidentally, they were never subject specific. I made friends at our mm. Birmingham meetup with people studying arts and humanities, business and law, all sorts of different things. Yeah. But trying to replicate that online is is the next big challenge how we create those informal spaces how do we do the equivalent of the chatting in the bar or over a coffee Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and i think it's interesting because we're talking about online obviously we're online at the moment we're we're doing this from a distance perspective um sometimes in student hub if if you see back to the student hub live things a couple of years ago we used to be in the studio and we were all able to see each other and we were physically there but the world has changed. We mentioned the pandemic earlier and things have changed. And I'm not saying, or we're not saying that the online is the be all and end all, but the reality is a lot of us do do things online. We are doing things from 
different perspectives. I think I, I, mean, I haven't forewarned you, but Sally, what would you say if you were trying to encapsulate it? What would you see was say was your biggest challenge about doing things online, and the biggest benefit? And I'll come to you, Martin and Kath. So the biggest challenge about doing things online, and the biggest benefit in terms of what we're talking about overall. Sally, what do you think? <clears throat> Okay, and um, I, I think I think having having the facilitated on on online things mm -hmm. is it, great because it means that everybody has a chance to participate. Um, and I, I'm got, think I'm going to answer this question in a slightly different one from from how you expect. But but a, a challenge with that is is that um, I, I do worry, and this is goes back to sustainability and well being, that 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 people need to see each other sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and and we can have online, but I think it needs to be punctuated with with bits of of opportunities to meet face to face as well, and how mm -hmm. we and and during the pandemic maybe some of us you know we've got I I work from home most of the time we've got used to working from home, but mm -hmm. I just worry <clears throat> if that if that's if if. On, on an ongoing basis for building sustainable academic communities, do we need to make the provision for 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 face to face as well? But always online is going to be there. We're getting better and better mm -hmm. at knowing how to do it. And I I need to give a big shout out actually to one of the organisers of this event today. Mm -hmm because we had an event in, in Scotland at the weekend where tutors came together face to face if they, if they felt comfortable to. And if they didn't, there was online participation as well. Um, so so and, and, and the feedback from, from, from people who were invited to, to this event was that the, the, the opportunity for, for face to face was very, very important with mm -hmm. the hybrid yeah. and the online crucial too. But, but just in terms of thinking going forwards about how we want to emerge from the pandemic, you know, we don't want to travel lots of distances, but mm -hmm. neither do we want to be wholly online. And there's a whole, I mean, I think we've only started discussions on there because, you know, in, in, in terms of helping to build, to build communities, to build connections to, to different communities within the Open University to move forwards, to achieve all of our goals. Um, it is about nurturing um, collegiality, building trust and, and, and how we do that. So it's um, yeah. an open question. Sorry, yeah. I don't think I answered your. I don't no, think I've answered your question there. Well, you you sort of have, and it, and it's this, and I think it it fits in. I know I'm just sort of I'm pinning pointing it on on open. Um, sorry, online and and as part of it, but it, it fits in with interdisciplinarity. And I know I said I was going to come to you, Martin and Kath. Hopefully, I will. But I'm, well, we've actually had quite a few comments come in, um, with with questions from students. So. Julia said the best experience she had was at a residential school and she's attended some great conferences. Uh, Paula, uh, you'll be pleased with this one um, for your previous role, Kath. Paula has just registered with the Students Association. She's going to look more into that. Ruth said it would be great to have an interdisciplinary space with channels for different interdisciplinary themes of interest. Yeah, absolutely, because we, we're talking about these different things and we're saying that and sometimes it's a case of well, where do we go? Where do we go? We've got this. We're all doing these different things. And how do we meet up with different people? Um, Angela is saying, as a disabled student, studying online is the only option I have. But it has enabled me to make contact with other people that I couldn't have done otherwise. And absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, we're talking about it from the pandemic. But for many people, online was something they did all the time anyway. Uh, you read books and there's characters in it. And they study with the open university because they can't leave their home. And I think it's not a negative thing. It's actually a really positive thing. Um, and yes, we're, we're still talking about the interdisciplinarity because it's it's part of this this holistic way of doing things. There's also another question. Justin's asking. He's bouncing the idea of doing the open degree as a discipline instead of specialising. Is there a decision? Is, is it something you have to do? Martin, you're probably the best person um, to answer that one. If the question well, you need to be registered uh, on a qualification, but you can switch qualifications. So once you, yeah. <coughs> so if you say you want to go for the main degree, you know, uh, for the open degree, that doesn't mean you're precluded from going for anything else. But of course, if you want to do a name degree, then there will be a definite pathway and definite modules you need to include. So you need to think if, if you're winding up between you know, the open degree and a specific name degree, um, you might want to think about, you know, what options would it involve you taking sort of further down the line um, so you wouldn't want to kind of right. preclude anything but yeah right. 
Okay. Go Thank to Yoko de Greer. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. <laughs> go open. We want open. Yeah. So we're almost out of time. So HD, I just want to come to you. Not not that you're last, but least. But you've had lots of ideas of people meeting up and how they've been building their own communities. <laughs> Yeah, we've been talking about how we engage and um, build a community uh, within the OU. So Jane had a great one. I sometimes try to engage with my community through art, which is fascinating as means change, mm -hmm. uh, meanings change. Alan says on DD102, the use of the form is baked into the TMA. So I'm sure Alan is a dab hand at these forums. Uh, Linda's yeah. got a great one. I love this. I spot people wearing OU hoodies on the school run and stop them for a chat. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant that you can... Uh, someone you may not yeah. know but you've got this connection just through the OU and instantly you click you yeah. know what doing a DMA is like yeah, and Karen says I'm in a zoom group of students on my last module and as we're following different paths it's great for getting different perspectives on your subject so lots of great contributions there and I just want to thank everyone for joining us in the chat because we've had some amazing contributions yeah. and it's been fantastic chatting to you all here in your study journeys for everyone starting out we've all been there we know it's nervous just signing up waiting to start but we know you'll do amazing and i can't wait to see you all again soon at our next student hub yeah. live sessions we've got yeah. lots more to come so do check out the website and i'll chat to everyone again soon <laughs> thank you HJ. you've almost believed all the things that i was going to say so i always do <laughs> i finish with this and this is um one sentence so a one sentence summary if you can of the this idea of today so this is uh, your one sentence summary of why interdisciplinary interdisciplinarity answers the questions kath go interdisciplinarity enables you to consider multiple perspectives which is what we need to solve complex problems brilliant thank you kath martin in a digital network society, nearly everything is interdisciplinary. And as the advert says, the future is open. So. Oh, fantastic. Sally. Interdisciplinarity gives you the choice, the control for, for your, your degree, your, your choice, your, your perspectives. Brilliant. Thank you. HJ, you, I know I did, you'd, you'd almost finished, but you, you don't get away without the one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can make it one sentence, but I always think it's uh, interdisciplinary study is a great way of building community and working together. Fantastic. Thank you, HJ. So we've given you lots of things to think about today, even if uh, we still struggle with actually saying the word interdisciplinarity, because <laughs> it's one of the ones that I say it so much and I still mess it up. So we've given you lots of and have, uh, the, the different ideas of representing study with items. So maybe you think about your items, think about the community that you want to build, part of the Student Hub Live community. And as HJ says, look at our website. We've got various different events still coming up. And then also thinking about how being open, being interdisciplinary allows you to think about big questions. So hopefully we're giving you lots to think about. And not last but not least, obviously, chocolate is the thing that underpins um, a study very successfully, as long as it's dark chocolate. But thank you very much for attending today and watching. And I hope we've given you lots of really good ideas and see you at another session soon.